one of our major responses to, to the love and presence of Christ in our lives, the Spirit of God. And I just want to remind you of the thankful tree in the back. Um, I, again, I hope that that becomes nothing but leaves back there on that tree. And there's also one over as you get off of the elevator. Uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy's back here modeling for us the thankful tree. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, we're, we're thankful you're there, Jeremy. That's so good. Uh, but I would encourage you, and though you may go, well, God knows I'm thankful, but sometimes it's important that we share that verbally. And this is a way to do that. And so as, it, uh, as the leaves outside fall, may they find a way onto that tree there and other places. And I want to say a word of thanks to you for your prayers, uh, for our family. Um, indeed, uh, we are grateful and thankful to God and God's presence. Uh, but we certainly felt your prayers uh, over the last seven, eight months, I don't know, it's been a, been a long year, and uh, thank you. Our son is doing well, and uh, he is back to, trying to get back to normal life, uh, but now the really difficult thing for him is he's got to go and get married, and uh, yeah, that was supposed to, yeah, that's okay, that's all right. He's excited, he's excited, and uh, thank you for that as we will go on. We're continuing in the big stories uh, this week. We took a little break last week with Reformation. But we're in the book of 1 Kings chapter 8. One of the more significant stories long term in the life of the people of Israel. Right up there with the Exodus for sure. Uh, This is the dedication of the temple that Solomon has now built For God and for God's people. We'll begin at verse 22 and read through 24. We're just going to read bits and pieces, 27 through 30, and then 41 through 43. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord, The God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. For you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it as it is today. Verse 27. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayers and his plea for mercy, Lord my God. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, this place of which you said, My name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer of your servant, that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Verse 41, and as for the foreigner... Who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name. For they will hear of your great name, and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When they come and pray toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you. As do your own people, Israel. And may now and may know that this house I have built bears your name. This is the word of God for us today. Thanks be to God. I want to ask you a minute just to close your eyes. Don't go to sleep. I know. Maybe hard. But close your eyes for just a minute. Use your imagination and your memory, really. 
not imagination, for this is real. And I want you to just now go to that place where you have had a burning bush experience, where you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were encountering God. Just go to that place for a minute. Or maybe, maybe it's a place that you go to often to refresh your spirit and to commune with God. I want you to take just a second and go there in your mind. Thank you. You may open your eyes. There, there is a term in use these days to describe these various places that all of us have gone to in our own mind where we encounter God in a strong and powerful way. And that term is simply called, this is a thin place. Thin place being it's a place where, where my existence on earth and the presence of God in heaven seem to be closer. It's very, very thin in that sense. And we kind of have a real encounter with God. The story that we're reading today, this big story is the thin place. By the time of Jesus, it is the thin place for Jews, the temple. In the previous chapters in 1 King, it tells us of the seven years that it took for Solomon and all the workers to construct the temple. And of course we know Solomon spared no expense. He used the finest of building materials. The craftsmen that he called in carved elaborate decorations into the walls. And when it was all done, he had everything in Solomon's temple, in that first temple, covered in gold, even the floor. It was indeed a magnificent building. And then we pick up today when all is ready Solomon brings up the Ark of the Covenant and he places in the Holy of Holies and then as soon as that Ark is in place and hits the stand a cloud fills the temple. These are the verses just prior to what we read and suddenly the whole of the temple is filled with this cloud and people know that God is in the house. That cloud that descended on the temple is a sign of the presence of the Lord. It's the same cloud, by the way, that had led the Israelites out of Egypt. It's the same cloud that had descended on the top of the mountain at Sinai as God spoke to them. It's that same manifestation of God that has been with them all through this journey. And now, here in this solid place in this permanent place God shows up there's continuity the God who brought Israel out of Egypt wandered with them in the desert now this same God dwells with them in their land and for the Israelites all is well remember this is the height of Israel as a nation and as a country it is difficult for us Protestants to understand the significance of the temple in the Israelite and Jewish theology and life. That place is so massive in their understanding of who they are and of their encounter with God. And today, the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall, as you will hear, and you've seen those pictures, and I have been there, and maybe some of you have been there, the most holy site in all of Judaism on this, in this current time and day. People make daily trips to the wall if they live there, or they make pilgrimages in life if they are far away. That particular wall is not this temple. Remember, this temple was destroyed in the exile. But this is part of the Herod temple that was built uh, just prior to Jesus coming. Uh, and then, of course, it too was destroyed uh, in 70 A.D. And what was left was this part of the Temple Mount, as they call it. But it doesn't matter. It's a sacred place. It's a thin place. The temple is 
A place where God and His people could meet. A place where every good Jew today knows that, that God may hear in many places, but boy, I know He hears here. And that wall, by the way, is there are millions and millions of prayers that are rolled up and stuffed into the cracks of that wall. It's a place where God's people could receive instruction and encouragement to be God's people. It was a wonderful place, a significant place, a special place. But as we know, somewhere along the way, God's people forgot the purpose of that place. You see, it was to be a place for all people to discover the love of God. Even here in the Old Testament, Solomon recognizes this. Solomon in his own prayer in verses 41 through 43. God, hear the prayer of the foreigner. Because they will come and they too will get to know your name. And they will become those that help to spread your name. He also recognizes another significant truth that had been forgotten. God is not limited to a single place. He says it several times. God, this building I'm building really is, it can't contain you. The highest heavens cannot contain you. But it is here for us that we might prepare our hearts to hear you as you are so big. But we know that by the time of Jesus, the temple had become its own end. The place had become much more important in significance than the purpose. We know by the time of Jesus that it had its own entity. It had its own group of folks working in it. It had its own rituals. And more than, and, and certainly completely opposite from welcoming everybody, it was an exclusion of place. There was wall after wall after wall. In fact, Gentiles couldn't even get close to it. And what was it that Jesus called it on that one day? A den of thieves. The place had become more significant than the purpose. Instead of being a place of engaging God, it had become literally a barrier to God. That seems to be our impulse as human beings. That we had these special events and these special places in time and place matters and that's important. And while God may dwell anywhere and everywhere, the places where we experience that presence, that holy connection, are places of honored significance. And we do what we always do. We build buildings. The Middle East is covered in buildings and churches and sanctuaries where, quote, special things happened. All throughout history, shrines have been built on those various locations. Again, there's nothing wrong with having special places. We all do. Where we have met or we continue to meet God. In my mind, in my mind, I go to a couple of retreat places when I was in the youth group at Hermitage Hills Baptist Church. That's where my mind was going. Where I definitely encountered God in some very strong and powerful ways out in nature. But another place that I always go to in my mind when I think of that are all the sanctuaries of the churches that I have been privileged to be a part of. Because it is in those places on a week-to-week-to-week opportunity that I encounter God through those places and through God's people. Nothing wrong with having special places, but the danger comes when we forget the main purpose of meeting God in any place is that we are to be changed. and We are to become heralds. We are to become proclaimers. We are to become those who do what Jesus did. That's why Jesus spoke of God abiding within us, God dwelling within us. There will come a time when the temple here will not be the ultimate place that God is, but God will come and live in you. And it is at the heart of Paul's text today. You are now the temple. 
You are now the place where God encounters the world. You are a thin place. See, when Jesus was no longer present on the earth, he sent his spirit upon his people. From Pentecost onward, the church, not this building, not these blocks, not this particular place, though it is special to many of us and needs to be, but you, you are now the place where the Spirit of God dwells and where the world needs to encounter the presence of God. So I want to ask us a couple of just simple questions real quick. We do gather in special places. I am grateful for the block and the mortar and the wood and the carpet and the wood and the pews and all of that. I, I have said many times probably uh, that, that I might be buried under the steps of a local Baptist church. It's, it's just for me... All of my life, some of my first memories when I was not quite four, South Carolina, I can remember walking into a church. It has always been a special place for me. And so I want to ask us, when you come to this particular location every Sunday, do you come with the expectation that indeed it is a thin place? That when you come and you meet inside these brick and mortar, but you're meeting with the church, that God is here? And God is here every time we gather? And so do you come every Sunday with an expectation that God is going to speak in song, in text, in word, in prayers, in the people sitting around you. I know we come a lot of times with, I wonder if they're going to have the temperature better this week. That's important. I wonder if it's going to be too loud this week so I can hear. I wonder if it's going to be softer so it doesn't blow my eardrums up. You know, I think if I walk in to my Sunday school class and I see that so-and-so is there, we're not on good terms right now. I think I'll just pass. Do we think anything at all? This is a special location. It is a thin place in which God will dwell and God has dwelled. And so what are the expectations when we come? Do we believe that when we come, God is going to engage us? And so I am grateful for your gifts that help us through stewardship, that help us care for this facility, that help us keep the lights on and keep the chairs coming and keep the rooms and Sunday school rooms clean and prepared and literature ready and, and all the things that you might just sort of forget week after week after week that are done so that you can come and have an encounter with God. But then here's the really cool thing. Because no building contains God. And God's Spirit lives within us. Here's the really wonderful thing that when we say amen... And we finish in this particular location and we go out, guess what? We go from one thin place to hundreds of thin places. You see, this is not the only place that God can encounter someone. And your staff is not the only people, are not the only people, excuse me, are not the only people who are charged with making sure that somebody has an encounter with God. You are a thin place. And so when we leave from here and when we join all the other believers in Christ that are worshiping in a particular location this morning, and when we all leave and we all scatter out, literally thousands of thin places go out into this world. And as Lisa was reminding us today, 
our primary purpose as a follower of Christ is to engage the world. You are a thin place for God. And so I wonder. I wonder what would happen if we all began to take that very seriously and to understand that the presence of God, that I am the temple of God, I am the place where the Spirit of God dwells, and wherever I go, God goes. And so I wonder. If we begin to think of ourselves as a thin place, how might it impact the following circumstances? How would it change my interaction with the folks I work with? I am a thin place. The Spirit of God lives in me. How is that going to affect my interactions with those I work with? How is it going to interact and affect my doing chores with my children? I am a thin place for my family. What about having dinner with a spouse or your best friend? You are also a thin place for God. What about talking with a neighbor or the worker down at the local store? Does it ever stick in your mind that you are a thin place, a special place where God wants to encounter the world? For God is present in and through us, and so God makes His presence known When his people build houses for the homeless. God makes his presence known when a Sunday school teacher loves a bunch of rowdy three-year-olds. Who just make you want to pull your hair out. God makes his presence known when somebody extends a word of sympathy to a colleague who is going through a hard time. God makes his presence known when a boss chooses to offer grace to somebody who is messed up on the job, and on and on and on and on. The word of God for us today is really very simple. Give thanks for those special locations. Maybe that could be some of the leaves that you write up. But friends, if that's the only place you've left God, we've missed the purpose of meeting God in the first place. For you, you are a thin place. And somehow today, when you leave this place, God doesn't just say, I'll see y'all next week. He jumps right into your back pocket and goes with you. And says, okay, here we go. We have gathered today. You've heard my word. You've shared together. I have appreciated your worship. Thank you for remembering that your life is different from all the other lives in the world. Now, let's go together. For I have some people that need to meet me when they meet you. May God grant to us An understanding, a thankfulness for special places. But if we are not changed, if we leave God in those special places, danger, danger. Father, we give thanks this morning for those special places, those locations that that have helped us to encounter you. Every person here in this place today, I'm sure, has some location, some place that is special in their life and their journey of faith and maybe continues to be. Thank you, God, for those places and those people. But Father, forgive us when like our brothers and sisters, the Israelites, allowed the place to override the purpose. We are your temple, God, every one of us. And we, God, are called to be thin places in this world where people have an encounter with you. And forgive us when we forget that. Forgive us when we set that part of our journey with you aside. Forget that when we say, 
Uh, we're not, we, that's not my job. Yes, it is. Doesn't mean we are all the same place. Nor do we have to share you in the same way. But we all are called to share you. Because your spirit dwells within us. So help us this day, God. As we prepare to go from here, help us to become more aware of who you want to meet through us. We pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Maybe today your response, we'll ask in just a moment,